Welcome to Second Baptist Church. My name is Brother David Tucker. I'm pastor here, and we're very excited that you have chosen to join with us in worship today, especially Palm Sunday. Now, we are going to have a very special service for this day, and the day is going to be celebrated through the Lord's Supper. Now, we forget that that triumphal entry where Christ is exalted as a Lord above all things was actually his entrance to get to the upper room where he would share with the disciples the price he would pay for your salvation and mine. He wanted to get to the upper room. That's what the entry was about. It was to get into the city to that place where he could sit down with those disciples and share with them what he would be willing to pay so that they could inherit the kingdom of God, so that they could find the forgiveness of sins, so that we, you and I, could find salvation. So today, as we have this service, and as we celebrate this supper, I pray that you will see the triumph that Jesus had in getting not simply into the city, but getting to that place where he could share with his disciples the love that he had for them, the value that he placed upon them, and the sacrifice that he would give for them. As we begin our service, let's start with a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your triumphal entry, that folks hailed you as the true Lord. But Father, we also thank you that though you were God, though you were king, you chose to give it all up to offer salvation to us. Allow us now to lift up your praise, to remember your sacrifice. And Father, if there is one who is with us today, who's never received you as Savior, never felt the forgiveness that you offer, let today be the day they come to you, surrender to you, and find you to be the King of all kings. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin our service, we're going to begin with a beautiful melody from Miss Susan and Miss Rachel as they share with us the glory of our Savior.
In just a moment or two, the deacons are going to be coming to lead us in the time at the table. And as we do so, as we prepare our minds for that, um, I want us to think about what it means to come to it. A lot of folks ask, you know, whether or not their children should participate in this or whether a visitor should participate in this. And this is the guidance that we give as a church. That those who come to this table and participate in this need to have given their life fully and completely to Christ. And the reason is, is until that time, you don't know what this table means. A couple weeks back, I was going through O'Charlie's, and I was by myself. Didn't have anybody to sit with. I told the lady I'd sit alone. You know, one, please. And I was going through the restaurant, I saw a table that had uh, six seats and only five people. And I thought, I don't want to eat alone. So I just plopped on down and started eating with them. They looked at me like I wasn't supposed to be there. Just because I didn't know who they were or had not purchased the food that I was grabbing, I don't understand the concern that they had. Now, I didn't actually do that, just in case you were wondering. But I will say this. If I come to this table and I've never surrendered my heart to Christ, then I'm putting myself in the middle of something that I don't fully grasp. Bread and juice is just bread and juice to me. I don't understand how they represent, truly, deeply, personally, represent a body that was broken for me or blood that was poured out for me. But the one thing I want you to know, no matter what your situation is, is that God wants you to come to this table at some point. And the reason is because He wants you to be a part of His family. The Scripture is filled with God instructing people to draw individuals into the family table that shouldn't have belonged. King David actually brought in a young man who was crippled, who had actually been a relative of Saul, the man who had tried to kill him. And so he took a member of Saul's family, his enemy's family, and he set him right in the midst of his family to have meals. Everybody looked around and said, I don't think he ought to be here. But David, the king, said he belongs. Jesus, in the parable of the prodigal son, stated that the father, when he saw the prodigal come home, not only welcomed him, but it says he killed the fatted calf. In other words, he had a meal for him. And he set that young man in the middle of the table around the family The older brother wouldn't even come to the table. He doesn't belong here. But the father said he does. You and I need to know that Christ's goal is to get you here to the table. Whether you've surrendered your heart yet or whether you already have, Christ died to draw you into his family. We find this in the book of Romans. There in chapter 5, We read in verse 8, But God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ looked at you and I and knew that we shouldn't belong at that table. He looked across and He saw you and I and He knew that we could never be a part of that family. But Christ went to the cross to purchase the opportunity for you and I to sit there. I hope that before you participate in either the bread or the juice today, you ask yourself, have I fully given my heart to the one who fully gave his life to me? If you can't answer yes, I would ask you to refrain. But I would ask you also, by the end of this service, to surrender your heart and soul to the hands of our Savior. I'm going to ask now for our praise team to come and guide us in worship. Definitions of worship, I believe, comes from the pen of Max Lucado. He said, worship is the thank you that cannot be silenced. As we uh, stand and worship together this morning, we're thanking Jesus for what He did for us.
above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure but your word. Crucified, laid behind the storm, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall, and thought of me, above Jesus 
This morning, we're going to celebrate um, a remembrance. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper today. Um, this is going to be different than what we're used to. Uh, typically, Brother David takes the lead uh, in this, but, uh, but today the deacons are going to take that role uh, and lead us through this uh, Lord's Supper time. Uh, as I thought about this this week and um, was nervous about this day, that we were going to ask to be come forward and, and be the leaders in this process. I was very nervous about it. For one thing, I, th I thought to myself, I said, you know, Tommy, you're just not worthy to do that. That's not something that you should do. Uh, uh, that this is, this is something that your pastor needs to lead, that, you know, he's, he's the authority. And then as I got to thinking about it, and Brother David sent me the scripture readings and things, and as I looked through those this week, I recognize something all along, that this is nothing about me or you. This is about our Lord and Savior. He's telling us, he said, do this in remembrance of me. He said, I really am not worried about you as far as what you're capable of doing. Because he says, you're doing this with my power and my lead and guide. So as we take these elements today... Uh, we need to think about where are we in our lives today? What are those things in our lives today that separate us from our God? And we all have those. We all deal with those all during the week. But before we prepare to take the bread, which is a symbol of the broken body of Christ, and the blood that was shed for us through the juice, then we need to take a moment of meditation. We call it a moment of, uh, of confession where we look at those things in our lives today that have separated us from God or have created a barrier. Uh, we call that sin. And it's anything that we place that separates us from God. Anything that creates that barrier. 
So for the next few minutes, or the next moment, I'm going to ask you to meditate, to bow your heads, and just ask for forgiveness for those things that you know are in your life today that are separating you from that true relationship with Christ that he wants us to have. So for a moment, if you would, bow your heads and let's, let's, let's meditate. Brother Leslie Rogers, would you lead us in a prayer of confession, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today, Lord, thanking you for being able to come into your house, Lord, come to your table. And Lord, as many of us, as we pray, and Lord, we look and reflect as in our lives, as we look individually and independently lord as we look collectively and, and corporately with your church lord we ask that you would just simply forgive us forgive us of where we failed you forgive us those things that we have done that have separated us from you and lord we just ask that we come to your table today lord that 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 slate would be clean <clears throat> would be wiped away lord we would come with a blessed heart with a loving heart and lord we would come with a lucid mind so that we could be prepared to hear what you have to say as you speak, as we go through these elements of your Lord's Supper. Lord, we ask that again, you forgive us simply for what we've, where we failed you. Lord, we ask you to give us the grace that we would be able to go out and share your gospel to a world that, that just desperately needs you today, Lord. Bless our country and bless our military. Forgive us if we fail you again. Amen. Our hymn this morning is Lead Me to Calvary. A, we could not find a better song hymn than this to express the importance of this day. King of my life, I tell thee now, I shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy I forget that ceremony, lest I forget the agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou hast slain, tenderly mourn and and robes of light array, Lord, and cross of sand, lest I forget this ceremony, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Thank you. 
come to this table, it is important to take note how Jesus came to it. We understand sometimes that, uh, well, we don't always grasp the full price of what it is we gather to enjoy. I don't know if you've ever been out for a meal with friends or family. Maybe you looked at your spouse and kind of with a nod or a wink, you said, we're going to take care of this. We love these folks. We're going to take care of this. And you tell the waiter or the waitress, you just give the check to me. And then they give you the check. And you have to smile because you didn't expect it to be what it was. You had a moment of reckoning suddenly. You have to look at your wife and say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You just didn't recognize the price that was going to have to be paid to be able to give to your friends or your family that, that gift of love that you hope to have from your heart. Maybe you're a dad and you had a wedding that came up. And your daughter said, I'd like to have this. And you said, whatever you want, sweetie. And then she handed you the ticket. You had to look at your wife and say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Because you didn't recognize what that price was going to be. I want you to know that when you and I come to this table, Christ who paid the price for this, knew long before he arrived what it was going to cost. But he loved you enough to pay it. The scripture tells us over in Philippians chapter 2 that Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus told his own disciples, I'm going to the cross, and his disciples said, no, no, no. Too high a price. Jesus knew from the moment that he arrived as he preached, he was headed to the cross, and the crowd would say, he's lost his mind. Everyone around him said, the price is too high, but Christ looked through the years at your soul and at mine. He looked at your heart and mine, and he said, it is sufficient. He went to the cross knowing the price that would be paid for you. In fact, on the night that he was betrayed, this table represents his statement that a body would be broken, and that his blood would be poured so that we could gather in fellowship, so that we could know the forgiveness of our sins. Praise God that we have a Savior who knew the price and was willing to pay it. As we continue in our worship, I'm going to ask for the ladies' ensemble to come now and lead us.
This is the bread. In 1 Corinthians, 11th chapter, 23rd, 24th verses, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on that same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'd like to ask the deacons to rise, please. You know, it's different, and we do have the bread as would normally be in normal times, but this is not normal times, and I'm sure that everybody received one of these as they came out. The bread is on the top of your juice canister, if you need to know that. It's a little hard to get to, but I trust that you can. Um, I'm going to ask that uh, Dale come and offer thanks for the bread. Father, what a privilege and honor it is to be able to share in this meal with you. I pray that your precious Holy Spirit would fill this place that you would help us to understand what a price truly was paid for our salvation. I thank you so very much for all that you've done. You're truly so worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Also, there's the small plastic top on the juice. I'll give you just a second to take that off if you're like me. I spilt mine earlier. Take it, hope that you won't. The reading will be from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the 25th and 26th verses. In the same manner, I also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Uh, Brother David Wimpy, would you please come and have our grace over the uh, wine, please? Father God, we come to you this time, and Lord, we're just so thankful that we can come and have this time with our Lord's Supper and celebrate what you did for us. Father, you sacrificed it all. Father, we're not worthy of this. Father, you went through pain of unbelievable that we can't imagine. But Father, as a sinner as I, I am so thankful, Lord, that I can come to you and ask for that forgiveness and turn my life over to you and you forgive me. Lord, we uh, just offer it all up to you this morning and thank you for what you have and your blessings of your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Deacons, if you'd stand, please. This is my blood shed on the cross for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please be seated.
The scripture tells us at the end of the meal they had a hymn of fellowship. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. As I shared with you before, maybe you couldn't participate in this because you can't honestly say in your own heart that you have surrendered your life to Christ. We want to give you an invitation to be able to be a part of his table. We want you to have an invitation to give your life to him who gave his life for you. If you're here today and you feel like God's been speaking with you and you want to make a decision for him, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. And while we're singing, I'm going to ask for you just to come forward. Share with me the decision that God has placed upon your heart. Allow me the privilege of praying with you. And then we will celebrate together as you come to his table with his family. Well, what about you, dear friend? That invitation is for you as well. Will you make this the moment where you surrender your life to him? Will you make this the moment where you recognize the sacrifice he's given and the opportunity that he has offered? I pray that you do. Pray to him. Confess your sins to him. Share with him your failures, your heart, heartache, and your regrets. Pour your life out to him and then give it to him. Give it all to him and say, Lord, it's yours. As you do so, he will take you up in his arms. He will instill in you his spirit, his strength, his forgiveness, his grace. And the scripture says, all who call upon the Lord will be saved. Salvation can be yours today, right now, if you simply turn to him and pray. Now, if you've made a decision today, if God's spoken with you today, or you've just been encouraged today, or maybe you have a prayer need that's really still weighing down on you today, will you let us know? Will you reach out to us and share that with us? You can comment to us through Facebook or YouTube, whichever place you're seeing this video, but you can also email us if it's something more confidential. You can call us on the phone if you really want to talk with a minister or a pastor. We are here to assist you. We are here to encourage you. We are here to minister to you because there is a Savior who gave his body and his blood for us, who has offered us salvation and has granted us a life of walking with him. Thank you for being with us. It's been a joy to worship with you. And I can't wait to catch up with you, especially next week as we celebrate together the wonderful, powerful resurrection of our Savior on Easter morning. May God give you grace, and we'll look forward to seeing you right here at Second Baptist Church.